Welcome to The Real Review, sponsored by Parametric and Lazy Ape Studios, where you get some of the latest happenings, real thoughts, and perspectives in the world of film and television. This is our coming soon and news segment. This is where we talk about all the films that are coming soon, a.k.a. coming out this weekend, right, Matt? Yes, indeed. Yes, do we have it? And we, I think we got a little bit of news. Yeah, we do a have a little, little bit of little news. Something, little something that nugget. We, a little nugget. A little nug. I'll, yeah. I'll give you a hint. The the hint words are Star Wars. Or Porgs. Or Porgs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't say that name in front of me, Matt. I'm going to shut this podcast down. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So uh, we're going to be talking about two films that are coming out this weekend. One, The Foreigner. Four no- I said the very strange. Four noir. Four noir. <laughs> it's a foreign noir film. No, the foreigner with Jackie Chan, and then a horror film called Happy Death Day. Yeah, I think it looks it's like horror, horror comedy, kind of. Yeah, it's kind of a Groundhog Day meets horror, but we'll get there. Yeah, we'll talk about. It. So we'll start off, and uh, why don't we just get right to the uh, dive in talking about the stuff with foreigner. So, I uh, this synopsis for this one is a humble businessman with a buried past seeks justice when his daughter is killed in an act of terrorism. A cat and mouse conflict ensues with a government official whose past may hold clues to the killer's identity. The director is Martin Campbell, and the stars primarily are Jackie Chan, Katie Lung, Lung, Lung? I don't know if I'm pronouncing Nailed it. it. Yeah, Pierce Brosnan, <laughs> uh, Ray Fearon, and uh, a couple other people. So those are kind of like the biggest names that I've seen, I think, yeah. in the trailer. Um, what are your thoughts? I'm what are you thinking. Kind of excited to see this thing. Um, yeah. I haven't seen Jackie Chan in a long time, and sure. it, it's kind of got this like taken slash collateral damage vibe, right? Um, it's going very like visually. It's going for a very real yeah. style, very kind of. And the director, you know, he, same here. Martin Campbell was the guy that did Casino Royale. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, so it's got a similar ish style yeah. to that, but he also. It hit or miss here. Yeah. So, director of Goldeneye, director of Casino Royale, but also the director of Green Lantern. Ooh. I know how that turned out. Wow, so what happened with that? Yeah, but so we'll see. I mean, way back when day. he did Mask of Zorro. So yeah, he was yeah. in an off film production. Yeah. So I don't know. Jackie uh, Chan seems like he's like emoting a lot in this, more so than I've is. seen in anything. So he's really acting. And yeah. Jackie Chan has always been a good actor, but he's been, definitely been a very physical yeah. versus dramatic actor. He's always very, I mean, he came from an environment, you know, he learned this type of style of martial art where it was very performance-based. And he was very qualified and yeah. good at martial arts as well, but um, it was very much a performance-based thing. And so he always took on this very physical style, but now that he's kind of aged out of that, it's going to be interesting to see him taking on a role that is much more dramatic in tone and nature. Right. This could be a good potential sort of reignition for his career, as yeah. well as, I would say, Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> kind of like- <laughs> Who I, we haven't seen in anything like how I feel like good what, for a long time. Right. Kind of like what I feel like what Taken did for Liam Neeson. Yeah. Yeah kind of Agreed. bringing him into that. I don't think this is, uh, personally, I just, it. I, I don't think it's going to rank into like the best film of the year type category for right. me, but I would be happy with a solid kind of B yeah. outing. You yeah, know? me too. Um, as long as it's got some good kind of dramatic tension and rising stakes action, um, then I'd be interested to check it out. It's so. at uh, 86% on Rotten Tomatoes right now too, so very um, nice. that's good to know. There's only like seven reviews, but that's okay. Yeah, and it's so, got that R rating, which is hopefully meaning it's going to really stick with some solid action and suspense. And some visceralness to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so... So yeah, I'm excited to check it out. Um, rate it. Rate it? Rate your excitement level. Probably seven point, like eight out of 10. Okay, I'm, I'm probably eight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So, awesome. Then let's move on to our next one pretty quick there. Um, next one is Happy Death Day. I know you're excited for this one. So excited. You got to keep taking your own personal opinions and projecting them onto me during this podcast. Is that what right? I'm doing? I think that's what's happening. Oh, at okay. least that's what my assumption is because I'm not excited about this at all. And I, <laughs> I think I'm, you know that. <laughs> I'm kind of not. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So the synopsis <laughs> for this one just real quick. A uh, college student relives the day of her murder with both its unexpected unexceptional details and the terrifying end until she discovers her killer's identity. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, it stars uh, a few different people there, but uh, Jessica Ru- Roth, Roth uh, Israel Broussard, sure. uh, Rudy Modine are like the kind of the biggest, <laughs> biggest names attached to it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, director for Christopher Landon has done a few other kind of ish biggest ones, I would say. Um, mostly writing though. 
Okay. I don't know what directing wise he's really done. He directed Disturbia. He directed, or I'm sorry, he wrote Disturbia. He wrote like Paranormal. Disturbia. He directed um, Paranormal Activity, the marked ones, which uh, I, I never saw. Yeah, yeah. and then also either. a film called Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Oh yeah, yeah, that came out last year, I yeah. think, or earlier this year, last so, year, I think. I, I have remember. not seen any of those, so I really don't know his style. Have you at seen all. Disturbia? Um, I saw it, but it wasn't directed by him. I mean, oh, it was written okay. by him. I like Disturbia. I thought it was all right. Yeah. I mean. It's got what's his face, Shia. Shia, you know, being his his twerky, yeah. quirky, like twitchy kind of self. <laughs> it's um, basically, it's, yeah, uh, he's like, whoa, 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 there's Sam a killer next door. <laughs> whoa, whoa, yeah, it's same with Wiki in a n- without robots kind of. Oh, uh, it's so much impression. better than Transformers, though. Yeah. So, um, I I'm interested in this, um, mainly because in movies like this, whether it be Edge of Tomorrow, um, Groundhog Day. Or an old school movie called 1201 that I used to watch for some, for whatever reason back okay. in the day as a kid. Yeah. Where the day repeats itself. Yeah. Um, there's some reason behind it. Yeah. Uh, in the movie 1201, there was a science experiment that essentially bent time to yeah. where it resets every day. Yeah. Uh, and Groundhog's Day is a little bit more spiritual, I guess, in a sense to where yeah, it's, it's more like, like he's on a spiritual journey to right, really- right, right unlock the best side there's of no himself. S- there's no science to it. It's just right. something like that. The yeah. the Edge of Tomorrow is more scientific and alien like technology. Yeah. Um so there's another one that came out recently that I told you about that I actually ended up watching called Naked. Oh yeah. It's a it's a Wayne's, it's a Marlon Wayne's film. Is it good? Eh. Is it science or just reasons? It's reasons. Okay, so it's kind of more like Groundhog Day. Yeah, he's getting married and he's kind of this I don't know, he just kind of like is a bit lackadaisical with life and a so, bit stupid and but he really loves this woman he's getting married and the night before he gets married or the day of his marriage he ends up waking up in this hotel room somewhere okay and that he has to get and he's naked okay and so the idea is that he has to kind of solve the riddles and put all the pieces together and get to the chapel and get married i gotcha yeah so it's a comedy okay um, whereas this one i think you said kind of probably like a comedy horror yeah, ish. Um, Very dark comedy. Here's the thing with this: there's nothing supernatural feeling about this. There's nothing in the preview. There's nothing supernatural. It's like a just straightforward killer that's killing this person over and over again. Yeah, with the, I will say the mask looks weird to me. The little baby face mask. Right. Yeah. Um. And, uh. So I don't know what what the possible reason is and how she's reliving this day over and over again. You know, yeah. like. It's not going to be, I don't feel like it's going to be a science-based thing. It's probably going to be like. How often do they ever explain why they're reliving these days? They never really Edge do. Edge of Tomorrow and 1201. Well, Edge of Tomorrow, yeah. I mean, because of science. But <laughs> yes. When it's not science-based, when it's more the yeah, spiritual thing. Yeah, science. Yeah, it just kind of happens. Yeah, And they Mr. never really White. figured figured out. And I, I don't know, maybe this will be science-based, but it doesn't seem like it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not really that excited for this. Yeah. So I'm, I'm probably at like a five. I'm less for okay. sure because it's horror. Yeah. So maybe three. Okay. Out of ten. So yeah. I yeah. I, I do have some interest in it though because I want to see what the what the reasoning if, is. If I knew for a fact it was more of a straight up horror comedy, I can get into those. Okay. You know, then I would probably have a bit more interest. But it it looks like a pretty straight up. You know, in the description here, it's just straight up genres horror. So. Gotcha. Well, the embargo hasn't lifted yet, so there are no reviews. Comes out in like two days. Great sign, Matt. That is not a good sign ever. <laughs> um, yeah. And so we'll, we'll have to see. Cool. Um, well, what news yeah. do we have then? Let's move into that. Yes. So, news. The Last Jedi trailer dropped last night. Bum, bum, yes. Bum, bum, um, by the time you're listening to it, it's probably a couple days later. But <laughs> last night it dropped. Yeah, it's much days later. I did a trailer days. reaction for it. It's on it's on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash The Real Review. And I got chills multiple times watching it. Yeah. It's really good. I know I like the first one. You didn't like it as much, the yep. first trailer that came out in April. Yeah. Um, it but didn't I, give I, me enough to warrant what it was. Right. I like this one better. Yeah. And I know that you did too. Yeah. Um, and it, it posed a lot of questions and a lot of things are like, man, they're really potentially taking this in a different path than you would think that you're take something like this potentially yeah they're saying that this is going to be the darkest of the trilogy yeah. which is again similar to how they've kind of how they did the the first the original trilogy right, not right, how they right. did you know the like prequels the Empire, yeah. right so maybe there'll be more of betrayal kind of yeah. death stuff going on it's looking very strongly like Ray might end up. They, I know they kind tease of it at the end. She into might, some of the dark types, might types dabble in the dark arts a little yeah, bit there. Maybe. Um, I think that would be a really, really interesting choice. Yeah. If her and Adam Driver ended up kind of like 
being best buds. I don't. I think it's misdirect, and I know a I lot of people think that too. I don't think she's going to do that. I mean, she Han meant something to her. Yeah. And she watched Kylo kill Han. Yeah. So I don't think that she would do that. However, if she's Luke, giving into the dark side, Luke is doing her no favors yeah. by pushing her away. Is yeah. what's happening. Like, like Luke is someone that that she is kind of idolized yeah. and in a way of like, this is a mystical person that, you know, can't possibly real. She meets him and it's just failure to meet all her expectations. Right. And she's like, you know, or he, he says that line in there that I, that gave me chills too. He's like only once I've seen, you know, raw power like this before. And I wasn't scared then, but uh, I, I should have been, I am now, you know, whatever it was. And, yeah. And I'm like, dang, this is going to be intense. And it seems like he's just like grouchy old Luke and he's like running away and trying to, it's like pushing Ray away, you know. And it's yeah, of... and I will say this: if you're if you're not wanting any spoilers for Jedi type Star Wars stuff, I would potentially just right. not listen to what we're going to be talking about the next little bit here. But you know, just got to put that out. Yeah, put that out there for the folks. Um, I do feel like they are moving towards that kind of gray Jedi zone. Yeah, all the indications from what they're showing with the trailer are appearing to be that to me, right. where she's going to be this potential true balance of the Force by finding that she can kind of wield both sides of the force that she doesn't have to be this extreme because right. with that joining forces with, you know, because she's trying to find like her place and all this is yeah. what she's saying. Whereas in before it was always very obvious she's good or she's yeah. bad. That was very clear. So it's, it's like they're trying to project this idea that she kind of fits in this weird non zone. Yeah. Um, whereas before it was always, I'm a good person that's struggling to not be pulled into the dark side. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. Luke um, at the end of the trilogy was a little bit gray. He wasn't just straightforward, like light side Luke. I mean, yeah. you've never seen a Jedi force choke somebody, but Luke does at the very beginning of Return of the Jedi. So, and he's never, he doesn't have someone teaching him at that point. So right. he's kind of just like, to me, that was more of him slipping into potentially the dark side and them trying to like, kind of whet your appetite that maybe he is going to go dark. Right. So I think that, there could be some of that. So yeah. it's not like a completely new idea, but at the same time we could see it venture further. Yeah. Um, and so what's really interesting is you get to see Snoke for the first time in not hologram form. And right. which by the way, the visual looks absolutely amazing. It's right. all CG yeah. and it looks real to me. Uh, and I will say this as well though. I, I would kind of be okay with her potentially partnering up with Kylo Ren because I feel like because of the events of the first film, he's really been removed in my mind as the, a main antagonist for her. She's already beaten him. And a lot of people argue, oh, well, he got shot and all this other stuff. But it, she's still already beaten him. It doesn't matter in my mind if, if she beat him under this circumstance or that. Unless he's, like, literally incapacitated by something else and then she beats him. Oh. Like, the fact that she already beat him, she's already overpowered him, she's already been successful at stopping him, yeah. makes him a weak antagonist in my mind. So it would make sense more to have an alternate Snoke or something like that step up as the real antagonist. Ryan Johnson said that they're kind of, like, co-protagonists. So that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, antagonist or protagonist? Protagonist. Okay. So, referring to Kylo too, which right. is surprising. Right. And um, you're, you're seeing in the trailer even he's got that look of is he going to kill his his mom? And you know, like he's got the finger on the button. Is like, am I, I going to blow? Could have been a misdirect as well. That could have been, been completely separate. They scenes. could be setting up a couple stuff there. But um, a couple things there. I've been, um, I'm really curious. And yeah, I think Snoke's going to be, this is where he takes a step forward out of the shadows, if you will. Yeah, there's that scene where he's like torturing um, Ray or whatever yeah. with the force. She's like bending backwards or whatever. Yep. And um, I've been reading all the canon novels and how they all tie into the movies and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the last one I just finished actually talks about Jakku, the Battle of Jakku, where Ray is from, and um, the outer regions, the unknown regions of space where um, basically the First Order comes to fruition. I think when you talk about this, you need to be like, mm, yeah, so I've been reading this. Uh... Well, uh, yes, and so let me tell you all about this <laughs> okay, and uh, exactly. the First Order. And I am not ashamed of my Star Wars nerdum. Nerd! It, it's totally You're talking cool to a guy me. that's been the last, you know, six SDCC. So. Yeah, it's yeah. like my favorite, like, thing to I'm do is just learn all about Star Wars canon. And, yeah. and so the First well, Order comes Well, you are that out. guy. You're the universe building guy. You love that stuff. Yeah, I love it. And so the big thing with this is they're really, I'm pretty sure Snoke is from out because they're hinting it in the book as that there's stuff out there that we don't know an uber dark force and stuff. Well, is there has there. to be a story behind where he comes from right. or what he's done. 
I'm starting to think that it's possible that Ray came from somewhere out there too in the unknown regions, uncharted right. space. Well, and there are people saying that maybe she is one of those. She's like Anakin. She's like that immaculate. I hope not. Force but, conception type things. I hope not, but it's possible. So it's possible, and she could just be two Jedi that we never even met before they were murdered because after the events that take place in, um, well, no, I don't even know how, cause there's no Jedi around except for Darth Vader and then he dies and then Luke and Leia. So I, I don't, there would have to be some unrelated, right. Like hidden in a foreign world parents or something. Yeah. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. And I, there's that dialogue at the beginning of Although, the trailer. I will say as well though, if she realizes that she's related to Kylo Ren, then that would give a lot of context towards bringing their relationship, at least in my mind, towards them being closer to each other. That'd be because, the only way in my mind right. I feel like I would if be she, okay with if it. If she finds out that they're like cousins or something, yeah. then she's kind of like, well, you did some really horrible stuff there, but I'm also confused about this dark side thing. Right. And we are family. You're the only family I know of. I need to, I need to Confliction. just- Confliction. Yeah. And that would be, because I would hate the idea if they're, if they're not related in some way, I don't think I'd like the idea at all if they were to like team up. Um, I, I, I look at I, it's a buddy cop film after that you know what I mean it's I like it they gotta go buddy prance cop around film. you know and uh, the next one of them film, is like the crazy one the <laughs> Kylo next, Ren and then the more serious one <laughs> yeah. is Ray and she kind of keeps the next track. spinoff film is just gonna be all porgs by the way so you can uh, buy your tickets now for they're that they're never gonna do it it'll it's never called, happen it's called hashtag porg life um, I call it hashtag bad decisions yeah That's no I'm it. excited for the porgs but um, yeah so there's a dialogue at the beginning of the scene at the beginning of the trailer where yeah. Snoke is talking about um, I found you. I uh, since the moment I found you, I've noticed something special in you. Something raw power. Something huge. Something special. All that stuff. Yeah. And and you're meant to believe that it's for I think Kylo. He's just, I think he's building up to asking her on a date, and I think that's how he's doing it. He's, <laughs> you're so special. He's gonna. You're beautiful. Well, the the <laughs> misdirection is. I think they're. Po- you've seen the way he looks. He needs to just <laughs> flirt as hard. As he Let can. me get my thought out, Joel. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So. What they're saying is that they're making it think that it's him talking to Kylo, but yeah. I think it's really for Ray. Okay. And so we'll see. He's not asking her out on a date. No? Nope. Oh. That's not it. it Tweet be. Ryan Johnson. That's not what's happening. It could be a romantic But this is a really good comedy. trailer. That's what it could be. Really good trailer. There's going to be some sweet space battles. I like those little crystal yeah. uh, puppies or wolves or whatever those things were. They're like on. crystal foxes. Yeah, those are like, super cool. Yeah, those that, are really the cool. Name of, the name I want of that one planet, of those. The those are that, cool. The name of that planet is Crate, by okay. the way. And Is I'm, there a planet right now by that's called Barrel? Nope. Okay, and then they have a moon named And? Nope. Okay. Nope. I thought that was pretty clever, man. Nope. I thought that was pretty awesome. <laughs> You're upset because I'm making fun of the Star Wars universe. Crystal right? Foxes. Yeah. Don't make fun of my Star Wars universe. <laughs> Don't make fun of my Star- <laughs> I will say, as far as the trailer goes, I really enjoyed it. I yeah. did get the goosely bumps as well. Goosely. Yeah. I get the uh, the feels a lot of the time. I definitely thought the visual style was still up there and very good. You can stop showing me that photo. I'm going to punch your screen and <laughs> break it. You know, I, the, yeah, I don't like that guy. All <laughs> I see porn. when you, all I see when you show that to me is just like money, dollar signs. That's all I see. That's all Disney sees yeah, too. So, oh well. Anyway, so we we have now I've timed it. We've now spent more time discussing the trailer than the actual films coming out this weekend. So it's okay. Uh, yeah. So there's a ton of stuff there to break down. But uh, anything more you want? To no, say that's about? it. All right. Cool. Well, then we're gonna go ahead and wrap things up in the podcast. A couple quick ways you can get connected. We've got our website, realreviewmedia.com. We've also got our Facebook, which is facebook.com slash realreviewmedia. Then we have our Twitter and Instagram, which are both at realreviewmedia. We also have our YouTube page, which is rocking and bopping and going and doing all those cool things. That's where you've got our, <laughs> what? You know, like it's my our YouTube and page is not rocking and bopping. It's uh, slash the real review. No, it's yes. not <laughs> what it is. I'm just saying. It, <laughs> I, know, I know. I'm using some adjectives. I'm trying to make it seem awesome. Awesomer. Awesomer, yeah. yeah. So that can be found via uh, youtube.com slash the real review. And then, as always, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Give us your thoughts on the trailer for The Last Jedi, anything about your excitements or feelings on the films coming out, which is uh, our email address, realreviewmedia at gmail.com. Do it. There it is. So, anything else, Matt? No, that's it. All right. Well, it's been real. It's been real.